All right, so welcome back to another Tech Path. We're gonna jump into some very interesting aspects around how decentralization works around the node systems. Now, many of you guys have seen this really kind of become uh, very popular over the last year, year and a half, through a lot of different uh, devices and a lot of different projects. Gala, of course, is one of the lead projects out there that has been really kind of showcasing how nodes can be deployed in a big ecosystem. We're gonna dive into that today. My name is Paul Bear, welcome back in. The tech path. Let's get into it today with Chris Shooter, who is the who is the lead engineer of the Node team, actually over at Gala. So we thought, hey, let's get in with the guys that actually know what's going on with the nodes and learn a little bit about them. Chris, welcome to the show. Hey, glad to be here. All right, so Chris, let's get into um, first of all nodes. Some of our audience, very sophisticated uh, crypto enthusiasts, investors, people maybe might be actually running nodes or staking in various types and different ways across the entire ecosystem. When you look at Gala by itself, you guys obviously, the node team there, running all aspects of your node business. Let's get into the framework of what a node actually does for the Gala ecosystem. Yeah, I like to think of nodes sort of as the heart the heart of the ecosystem, the nodes run the workloads and the workloads are what keep our blockchain running. They keep the, the games running. Um, and they also reward people for actually using the nodes. So if you think of the rest of the ecosystem as like the circulatory system, the nodes are the, the heart and the heartbeat. And each person that um, buys a license to either a founder's node, music node, film node, they run a different aspect of our ecosystem. And by running a node each day, they earn the opportunity to gain rewards for supporting our ecosystem and doing some of the work that we need done to actually run a distributed decentralized uh, crypto company. Let's talk about that because I think what uh, most people understand and recognize when it comes to Web2 is the typical AWS services, rack space, you know, businesses that are really cloud oriented that manage everything from, you know, your back end, your CRM, all these different functions. With crypto, it's been quite a bit different. Obviously, we've seen the uh, the decentralization uh, phase really kind of start to kick in where people are starting to get it. When you guys are developing, uh, and I know you guys made some recent announcements, talk to me about some of the things you're doing that is really kind of advancing the technology and taking it to another level. Yeah, well, that's exactly right. Uh, right now, we have a cloud paradigm. And this is where crypto and uh, Gala comes in. Anything you can do on the cloud, you can do on a, a distributed set of computers. So um, think of like the share economy of like the Uber days and the um, Airbnb. Remember at the beginning of those, uh, people would say, I'm not going to get in someone's car or I'm not going to uh, right. go into someone's house, You're right? That's the same thing with our node system. It's people are running actual computational cycles on the nodes. So it's the same kind of, well, the cloud does what I need. Why would I want to do this? Well, mm -hmm. for the same reason you, do, you, do you did Uber and Airbnb, there's no reason we need to pay Amazon $50,000, $100,000 a month to run these games. Why not pay the people that are actually playing the games who are actually in the Gala ecosystem? Um, it's a way we actually share with our company, with the rest of our users. Uh, the Gala coin is distributed by founders nodes. So you're running workloads. The specific workload you're actually running is called um, IPFS, which is an interplanetary file system. So it's a way to share files similar to what Amazon does was an S3. So I know I'm going pretty deep into tech, but it's everyone needs to be able to host files somewhere. There's yeah. no reason why our nodes can't do it too, and you can get rewarded for doing that. So we're sort of obsoleting the cloud if we do this, right? So with, with the use case of how nodes can work within uh, crypto, and I think a lot of people are already starting to find this even with things like what we're seeing with Ethereum, on uh, you know proof of stake, it's changing the aspect of how you can actually run a node. I've seen all sorts of variations, everything from all nodes to rock and pool, et cetera. A lot of different uh, tactics that are being used, obviously for different reasons. In your particular case, it's actually doing a function, uh, everything from hosting games, music, et cetera. 
get into me, okay, so when I look at the Gala node ecosystem, a good example on the node page, there's a link out to Townstar nodes. And I was looking at, if mm -hmm. I want to run a node specifically for a game, I can run it that way. If, are there other ways for me to actually run a node within the Gala ecosystem other than just with a single game? Right. So there are the founders nodes, there are specific game nodes, there are nodes, and there are film nodes. And there's going to be more nodes that all run a very specific thing. And because they run a specific thing, they have special uh, requirements. Um, when you're just running a file system, your requirement is disk space. When you're running, let's say, a game server, especially we have some Unreal games now. If you're running an Unreal game server, you have some strong CPU and memory requirements. And so you need to be able to have a node that can do that. So... When you buy a license, you have the option of running your node software at a low minimum requirement and only doing a few things or the high requirement doing more and getting rewarded more. So it's a different type of staking. The staking is, is actually doing the work that runs our, our games, our, our ecosystem. All right. So um, this, I think when you look at, all right, let's fr phase into music for a second because I know from a game standpoint, the game itself, obviously, the players, the ability to flex on uh, overall stress on the system. Well, let me stay on the games for a second. Um, actually, mm -hmm. we'll jump we'll jump back to games for a second before we go into music. And I want to I want to jump into uh, the aspect of load. So, obviously, with cloud yeah. servers and different aspects around what we've seen in Web two, you know, you just throw up another rack. It you know distributes another uh, layer where you're able to handle. Uh, an influx of expansion in the, you know, whatever services and or project that it's running. How does that work with Gala? Let's say, for instance, Townstar or Superior or different games that you guys are rolling out here recently. What happens when a, a game goes viral? Spider Tanks is a good example. I know you have that one launching uh, end of October. Mm -hmm. What happens when a game goes viral and you just get an, a massive load of players and people interested in it? Well, that's How does a great the question. system flex? Exactly. Um, it can flex better than a cloud because let's we have 25,000 founders nodes online right now, let's say. I know your, your viewers know this, but the Ethereum network runs on maybe 8,000, 9,000, yep. and that is yep. a huge load. You know, So we have 25,000. Uh, in the case of Superior, which is an Unreal game, what they do is they build up a queue a queue of available servers. And as you go to play the game, it's one to four people, you pop off one of the servers off the queue and the games are short or longer. So we have the ability to scale up the amount of servers according to how many people we expect to play. Mm -hmm. But you can also make more servers because we're dealing with a distributed thing. We are not locked into a cloud system. Our node system runs off of a a piece of software called Kubernetes. And Kubernetes is a way of giving you a dial, say, to scale or, or an unscale, uh, turn down your load. It's a new way of running clusters in the cloud. Um, we're doing using it a little differently. Our nodes run little mini Kubernetes clusters so they can scale up or scale down as needed. Um, and because we have about 25,000 nodes, we have a pretty good um, allotment of servers to choose from to do this. When people try to understand is our nodes, you know, is it something for me if, you know, cause we've seen everything from Gala film nodes, music nodes, and obviously, you know, the founder nodes, I understand those are uh, far and few between a little expensive to maintain, but let's say that I wanted to step in and look at running a node. What would be some of the first steps to do that? Uh, let's just say a game node, for instance, what are mm -hmm. some of the requirements mm -hmm. I need to do? What are the situations I need to kind of be prepared for? Right. It, depending on game, uh, will depend a lot. We'll, we'll, we'll show you what requirements you need. Um, there are three different platforms we support right now for nodes, uh, Linux, Mac, and PC. The Mac and PC are just like downloading any piece of software. It's a desktop app, and the new version of our node, which we're releasing soon, next month, is Node V3, and it'll be a little tooltip. So you'll have like a little icon in the bottom of your screen, at the top of your screen, and your node will be running. You'll go through the web to see certain preferences, aspects of it. 
Um, for the power users, we also have a Linux version, which is mostly command line, but you can really get into the, uh, as deep as you want to go with watching how it's working and what it's doing. Um, uh, we find that I think the majority of our nodes are Linux nodes right now. Um, oh, really? Okay. All right. Uh, Mm -hmm. So with the, so, these are dedicated. Uh, these would be dedicated systems that we'd be, if somebody's running in their home or their business, uh, always on, mm -hmm. fully functional. Is there a uptime requirement for running a node? Right, right now you need to be up for at least six hours a day okay. to earn right. your reward. Right. All right. So but six hours in the a future, day, it, it'll be more. Yeah, in the longer? future, it's going to be more based on how much work you do. Exactly. Okay. It's going to be how many games did you serve? How many, yeah. You know, gotcha. How many files did you serve? Right. Interesting. Interesting stuff. All right. So um, for people who say, okay, I'm looking at it, because there's more and more of our own audience have started to ask me more questions about running nodes, whether it's doing something with Ethereum, getting into some of these other, you know, um, base nodes of all sorts. And the aspect on the gallon node side will stay again on games. Right now, let's say that I was looking at a, a gala game node. What what would be the maybe the easiest or lowest entry? Not necessarily from price, but from a standpoint of maintenance, uh, service side work, all those kind of things that I would have to do. Which game would be like the one I, I should be looking at? Well, right. So uh, the majority of our games are usually Unity or Unreal games. The Unity games require less of a resource. The Unreal games are the ones that require the most. Okay. All right. Um, when, you, when you're running a node, um, some people might be familiar with like running Minecraft servers. Right. It's very, very similar. It's, it's a way where you open up a port and you have a server process running in the background. It needs probably at least one CPU core and um, a few gigabytes of memory. But that server will be handling the amount of people that connect. So when a game requires more people to connect and there's more more gameplay, let's say, happening, mm -hmm. then it's going to require more of a load. If it's yeah. just like, you know, one to four people and these games are short, then the requirement is less. So for the smaller games, it's like just one or two cores and then you know, four gigabytes of memory, which is no different than the current specs we have yeah. right now. Right. Uh, well, okay, so let's talk a little bit about mobile gaming because this is something obviously we've seen in blockchain. We've talked to a lot of developers, a lot of game leads that are really advancing up mobile gaming. Obviously, we've had the Axie mm -hmm. team on here, many others that are really starting to look at that as a strategy going to the next level. Will that change the node architecture any at all if there are mobile players versus pc players anything that would be affecting how nodes will be functioning no it should be exactly the same so the the only difference you have with mobile is you've got a scale issue yeah. so i've been I've, I've made many many mobile apps and one day you're serving ten thousand players and next day you might be serving a hundred thousand yeah, exactly. So this is yeah. where our node, it's exactly what we're planning for. This is where the architecture comes in handy. When you have 25,000 nodes running, um, maybe they're idle for most of the day, but when you need them, they're there. And you can handle a higher load and you can turn that dial, that, that little Kubernetes dial, to let it you know, bring more nodes into the factor, into, into actually running the back end for you. I want to, so, okay, this is something that, you know, we've watched, um, you know, in real time, you know, the evolution of a system, meaning something such as Ethereum, you know, a, a fair, what would, could be considered one of the greatest feats in technology when Ethereum merged and we went to ETH 2.0, uh, and we've seen uh, a true shift from proof of work to proof of stake in that, in that function. With that being the case, now we know kind of the framework of where crypto is going. With Gala, when you look at the strategy that you guys are implementing, obviously coming off the cloud more and more, is this a long-term strategy? Do you think this is the way forward? Or will there eventually be a scenario where nodes would be obsolete or used in different ways? What is the, the I guess, the lineage look like for how nodes will be used in the future? Oh, well, I've drank the Kool-Aid. I think this is the future, <laughs> period. Um, I mean, think about it, Paul. Would you go 
do you consider driving getting in a cab anymore i mean does anyone yeah. ever ask are we is uber going to be the future i mean you go back <laughs> it it makes it makes perfect sense to me that we all have these computers sitting on our our desktop there's no reason why we're paying these cloud you know these giant behemoth cloud people to do these small tasks or run the games yeah. um and and you see that and you've seen it for years that people have been setting up their own servers to run their games or setting up their own uh, local things to get around doing these mm-hmm. things. Um, I think in 10, 20 years, we're going to think of this as a trigger, a tipping point. This was the yeah. chance because people crypto gives us the ability to reward people easily. It's not a credit card. You're not getting pennies. Uh, when you get crypto, you have an an infinite scale of how much you can reward people for doing work for your ecosystem. Yeah, yeah. I think this is the the thing that not everybody completely understands. Till you kind of sit down and whiteboard it out for them, is that the the future really is here. And it's ironic, you know, it's kind of like full circle. If you've been in computing very long or IT, you know, this is the way that pre cloud days, this was how things were done. Mm-hmm. Is is that we did have white area networks essentially that connected and yep. this is how we move data back and forth. So it's interesting that we're kind of going back there with a decentralized model around uh, crypto in general. But more importantly, I think in the functionality of a lot of these tool sets, which really starts to point at the issue of governance, it starts to point at the issue of regulatory, all those kind of things really start to get very, very murky, which I think is some of the issues we've faced here now with uh, legislation. Another area that I want to talk about is when you look at, you know, traditional internet supply, because we are starting to see other, you know, non-terrestrial applications. You look at things like what, um, obviously, what SpaceX is doing with Skylink and the potential for satellite eventually kind of eventually going into that direction. Do you see this being a potential to where we could see nodes going into areas that are completely underserved by traditional internet supply in the future is that something that you think can scale out well you touched on it the whole reason we can do this is because of this bandwidth change i mean Mm -hmm. we take it for granted but maybe the last 10 20 years um, the bandwidth i have right now is equivalent to what you would get on a cloud i have gigabit up and down you know so that opens up a, a huge you know, business opportunities. If I wanted, most of us just stream Netflix, you know, yeah. we're, we have the ability to do all this cloud-based things if we wanted to, but I want to it's touch a, a little overkill. more on what you said. Or, <laughs> yeah, exactly. And we might as well use it um, and get rewarded for it. I mean, I don't mind yeah. getting some crypto for running these things, but you touched earlier on the whole proof of stake and how the, the security, um, how the, the security issue, I know you, you you're, your viewers are probably very uh, concerned about that is like mm-hmm. that is is the US government going to clamp down on this well this yeah. is a great solution for us because we're doing work we're doing work for 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 the cryptographic rewards you know that satisfies the number one thing of a, of investing is like right. i'm not just putting money into something exactly. we're actually part of the system we're part of the governance we're part of the the entire ecosystem. And uh, that's why I think it's going to be the future. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Last couple of questions here I want to get into, and that is mobile nodes. So we've been exploring Mm -hmm. different aspects. We we had a chance to talk to the Helium team here recently. They've started to advance a partnership with T-Mobile. We've seen a lot of expansion in the mobile and 5G space. Obviously, with 5G rolling out worldwide, the likelihood of bandwidth is there. Question is, would you ever see a mobile node being a functional use case in something like Gala? I think the mobile nodes make a lot of sense for things like the music nodes. So we have mm-hmm. currently around 25,000 music nodes. And when you, when you want to hear your song, you just want to press a button and it's there. What right. the nodes give us over any other cloud solution is we basically have someone hosting that song who's going to be within a mile of you. You know, it's so distributed around the world. We're not set up in 
you know, here's where the racks are in this geographic location. Here's where the racks are. And right, with exactly. a mobile solution, you now can be everywhere. Right. And with music, it's more of a bandwidth concern. It's not a, it's not like the games. The games would be more of a, it's got to have computation. It's got to have memory. With music, you're hosting a file. And we use the, again, we use the IPFS to host our music. Um, and these notes can be anywhere in the world. And so if you're in the Philippines and you want to hear a song, then there's got a Philippine note is going to serve it to you. Yeah, yeah. I'm thinking of, I mean, in essence, it almost feels like Napster 5.0 in the essence of just file sharing. It is. And, and what we do everything really, over and over, Paul. It, it's I like, know. It's, it's the same tech, just new juice. <laughs> yeah. Uh, for sure. Uh, last question to you when you think about uh, security and also the evolution of these emerging markets. So everything from what we've seen in growth in the Africa, in the African continent, a lot of the countries within Africa, and then also in South America, a lot more growth. We've seen it in Asia and the Pacific Rim, really kind of accelerating. Now, most of those countries have kind of skipped over the terrestrial need for internet, gone mobile. So more and more of that is starting to percolate. We see it in use case uh, from a utility aspect. In terms of growth, and you look at where nodes are distributed right now from a gala, you probably have your, your footprint out there. Do you see any countries or regions that could start to accelerate maybe in the next one to two years? I'm just kind of curious where the hot spots might be. That's a great idea. You know, I haven't really thought a lot about that, but I do think that um, because we're, uh, you know, if I'm, if I'm not wrong, I think in, in continents like Africa, you know, they use their phones for everything, including pain and things like that. Yeah. And it's a natural connection that, I'm running my node. It pays me in a form that's still on this mobile system. And then I right. use that to pay, you know, it's, it's sort of closing the loop, you yes. know, I'm getting income from the, this place and I'm also using it to spend. It's like, now I don't, I don't have to go to another secondary or third party. It's, it's, it's a way for people to earn as well as, you know, become a lifestyle for them. Yeah. And yeah. If you're if you're good at this, some of people have hundreds of nodes, you know, and they are able to treat that as almost a you do a job um, yeah. because it's, it yeah. takes a lot of work to keep these things running, right? I talked, yeah, I talked to an investment house just, uh, in fact, just last night we were on a on a big conference call mm -hmm. with them, and th this was their business model was uh, node operations. They had, you know, I don't know, 50 different node concepts running on different, you know, everything from Phantom to Ethereum, et cetera, Gala. Um, mm -hmm. And I was impressed in the sense that they were utilizing that as an investment tool for investors to come in and help subsidize not only the operations team, the equipment, et cetera, to kind of run it for a share in the profits. So it's kind of, it's an interesting model, you know, from an investment side, but I was Im impressed with the fact that they were doing it at such scale, back to your point, where it, it becomes kind of a full-time full, a full -time judge, job. Last question to you is the security mm -hmm. aspect. So in the past, you know, if you run a network, you're on a wide area network, you know, in the old days, um, you had an IT director. You had somebody always up there running security, running all sorts of uh, firewalls, et cetera, trying to protect the, the system itself. How does the system get protected within a node architecture when they're run by people that are just average people, maybe not necessarily technophiles, really understanding how to run uh, equipment at you know large scalability levels, how does uh, security work? Oh, I'll start with a technical answer. So the first version of how we do this is we encrypt our what we call the images. So the way when you get a game server or a workload, it is an encrypted Docker container that runs. And whether you want to look at it or not, you don't have that ability unless you have this secret key. Gotcha. Um, but another way you get security is these are distributed decentralized systems. Um, you hack into someone's node, you're not hacking into the node system. Right. So there's 24,900, exactly. So you get a benefit by having so many extra people running these things. It's, yeah. it's more like the internet. You know, you'd, no one said, I hacked the internet, I won. Yeah. You know, you've only been able to get one tiny piece of it, you know, and then someone just, okay, we'll turn that tiny piece off and we'll do the other. You hack Amazon, you know, 
the system. You're in exactly. their cloud. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, Chris, I, you know, this brings up a bigger point. It's not necessarily in the basis of, of Gala, but in essence it is. You look at the different systems that are out there, you know, that run government, uh, utilities, municipalities, banking, medical, I mean, you could just go into almost every industry and centralized computing has been a big problem. It obviously is a big problem in the banking industry with fraud and targeting and phishing, et cetera. I mean, it just, it's going rampant. Why not start to implement node ecosystems in all these different industries with architecture, much like what you guys are doing right now? I love it. Let's do it. It's hard. <laughs> That's the problem. It's hard. People are getting PhDs now in distributed computing. I mean, this is, is new. This yeah. is new. We couldn't do this until we had this bandwidth problem solved. And for the most yeah. part in America, we, we have it solved. So now yeah. we can treat everyone's computer as a tiny brain to have the super brain, you know? Well, I, and I think now a lot of people all, look at it. Coming apart. Yeah, and I think a lot of people look at it in the sense of, yes, bandwidth has been solved. The other aspect is, is that most of the equipment that's running a lot of these legacy systems is so old where what you guys are building literally is you're getting to start from ground zero. So you're building on the latest tech, you're building on the latest infrastructure, mm -hmm. et cetera. And you know, you're building for the next two decades where a lot of these uh, entities may have to literally go in and replace you know, everything front to back and try to recreate something. So it is kind of recreating the wheel. So I, I would see, to your point, very hard to do. Uh, Chris, this has been fun. Always love deep dives mm -hmm. on uh, the team over at Gala. You guys do a really good job explaining hard things, making them a little bit more simple in understanding it. You guys, of course, if you're interested in learning more about Gala's nodes, uh, visit all their, their websites, the Gala Film Node, the Music Node, and then of course the Gala Games um, website will teach you a lot about game nodes but it's great been great talking to you chris thanks for stopping in today hey thanks for having me it's been a pleasure you, you bet all right so you guys are tuned in over on the podcast side of things right now make sure and jump in over here on the youtube channel this is where we do all of the good stuff including some of these deep dives like this if you're really trying to learn about blockchain and understanding kind of how this is changing society how you're earning money with it and then maybe how you're actually changing the way you're going to start to utilize tools entertainment, et cetera. That's all the cool stuff, I think, around Web3 that people, for the most part, have not necessarily understood where we're going with this. And I think that's the beautiful thing about technology is it never stops. It's always on the move. So make sure and tune in right here to this channel. This is where we dive deep on all these good things, everything blockchain gaming, the traditional crypto markets, TA, if you like that, charts and analysis, we do that. And of course, our own sentiment data. We do all that right here on TechPath. If you guys want to reach me, it is out there on Twitter, at Paul Barron. We'll catch you next time right here on TechPath.